Welcome to Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies, where we make innovation work through simulation, product development, and rapid prototyping. As an ANSYS channel partner, we sell and support the full suite of ANSYS tools in the Four Corner States and Nevada. Our headquarters is in Tempe, Arizona, while we have offices in Littleton, Colorado, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and near Salt Lake City, Utah. In addition, we provide training, mentoring, and simulation consulting with these ANSYS tools worldwide. Hello everyone, this is Manoj with PADT. In today's focus video blog, I'm going to show you how to do topology optimization using GTAM from Vanderplatz Research and Development. Once GTAM is set up, we'll go ahead and set up the topology optimization using Workbench and ANSYS Mechanical. The first step is to make sure that you've included your FEA analysis in ANSYS Mechanical, which you can see I've done so here, as well as with two different loading scenarios that my part is going to undergo during its operation. Here are some of the supported boundary and loading conditions supported by the topology optimization. Then the next step is to drop a Genesis module into the ANSYS Workbench environment. Once you do that, you'll notice that a new segment in the ANSYS Mechanical tree will show up as well as a toolbar at the top. Now let's go ahead and go to ANSYS Mechanical to complete our process. The first step is to choose the region for optimization. In our case, we're going to go ahead and choose a center portion to make sure that the other three bosses, cylindrical, are left the same. Next, we're going to choose some fabrication constraints. These are for manufacturing reasons to make sure that you don't end up with a non-manufacturable part. We're going to go ahead and choose fill Z axis, and we're also including a minimum member size of 0.15 inches. Here are some of the other fabrication constraints that you can use for topology optimization. Now, the next step is to choose an optimization objective. We're going to go to insert topology objectives, and in our case, we're going to change it from strain energy to mass fraction, essentially minimizing the mass of the part. Then, we're going to choose some constraints for the topology optimization. We're going to choose displacement of a remote point. And the reason to do that is because we want to control the displacement of this bottom center boss to make sure it doesn't move further than we want it to. We can apply constraints to different loading scenarios if we have multiple loading scenarios. In our case, we had two, so I'm going to choose the first loading scenario for this first constraint. We're going to go ahead and apply and we're going to give it an upper bound of 1.2. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again, but this time we're going to use it for the second loading scenario. So again, displacement of the remote point. We're actually going to use the same remote point this time, and we're going to choose the second loading scenario now. In this case, we're going to do 10.6. So now, the topology optimization has been set up. We'll go ahead and right click and hit solve. Now this, just, this does take some time, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the solve time for the purposes of this video. Once the topology optimization is complete, we can look at the topology density ISO surface. Once we do that, we can evaluate the results to see what exactly the solver is going to tell us. We're going to switch the mechanical view to capped ISO surfaces to bottom capped. Let me orient this properly. And now you can see I can move the ISO surface slider and it will show me exactly where uh, the density ratios are throughout the part, which will indicate to me where I can remove material and where I need to keep it to make sure the structural integrity of the part remains the same. So as you can see when I'm zooming around, you'll notice that the part is also thinner, much thinner, in the Z direction. The next step is to export this out as an STL here using the supported export tool. We're going to go ahead and export this out as an STL. So once that's done, we can go to ANSYS Space Claim to continue. So what we're going to do in space claim is to use the STL as a guide to remove material from the original model. So once we've opened up the original model, we can go to insert file and bring in the STL that we just created using GTAM. 
Once we've done that, SpaceClean provides a variety of features and capabilities to allow us to quickly and easily remove material and make sure the part is optimized as the software indicates. The first thing I'm going to do here is remove the unnecessary features from the original part. Those are things like fillets. The reason is, is we want to start off with a clean slate from the beginning and add the manufacturable features later on after we've completed the removal process. So I can double click on a fillet and it'll select the entire fillet loop and I can simply hit the delete button and it'll delete that fillet for me. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing up top here and delete it. Now SpaceClaim is a direct modeler so there's no features, there's no uh, sketches and extrusions, it's simply operating on the actual geometry itself. So you'll notice that after I create a plane at the center of this part, I can see the STL embedded, if you will, into the center of the original part. Then what I'm going to do is simply draw sketches as best as I can to fit the holes that the software indicates for the model. I can make it as approximate as I want or as good as I want, it just depends on how accurate I want to be and as well as taking into account manufacturable reasons. Once I've done that, I can essentially drag the sketch and cut through the entire part as a whole, select those again and cut across to the other direction as well. Now that I've removed material, now I can thin out the part as well. So what I'm going to do is offset the outer boundary of the part on both sides and drag the parts in by a certain amount to remove material from the thickness as well. Once I've done that, I can start adding fillets and such. I can use space claim selection features to select all the edges at the same time to add all fillets together. I'll keep doing that to clean up the part as best as I can. I'm sure you've noticed that I sped up the video just for the purposes uh, to keep this short, but you'll notice that it is quite easy to do. So I'll keep dragging for fillets, making sure all my rounds are good. Then. I'm done. I've used the STL as a guide to remove material in different directions and now I have a part that is significantly uh, reduced in terms of volume and mass. We can actually double check that by saving this first as a new part. Then we'll go ahead and open up the original part as well again so that we can do a one-to-one -one comparison of the volume. Again, insert file we'll go ahead and choose the original model and now what we can do is we can go to measure mass properties and then select on either one of our parts to look at the volume in our case we'll look at the original model first and you can see the volume indicated here then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the optimized part that we just created using space claim and you'll notice that the volume is about 52 percent reduced uh, through the topology optimization using both GTAM and SpaceClaim to control our process. So you can see that topology optimization provides a really easy and user-friendly way to identify material removal while not sacrificing part integrity. That is key for manufacturing reasons and for engineering purposes. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe as we'll be doing more videos on tips and examples in ANSYS. Feel free to jump on our website at PADTinc.com or give us a call at 1-800-293-PADT or email us at tech at PADTinc.com.